Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanti subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. We are going to be talking about Virtual Rhapsody, which is a big event. Well, at least it was placed as a big event that, you know, was going to change everything. Was probably, they were like exactly like the air alive. They were trying to bring some new eyes to themselves. It's in Singapore, which is hard for everybody to reach. It's hard for a lot of people to reach because it's an expensive place to go. So they, that possibly lowers the chances of them having something very successful. But let's take a look and actually see the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Here's the boys side. As you can see, just by the look of it, it looks like there are plenty of empty seats. I'm not sure if those are reserve seats. More than likely they are. They're probably in the premium section. Again, take it with a grain of salt because they, these could be very cherry picked. Or they could be something from Nidhi Sanji official. We don't know. So just assume they're cherry picked and assume this is basically someone trying to make it look bad. But we'll see. That's the boy side. Of course, we already knew that it was going to be a live 2D type of concert. We already knew that it was going to be that way because I guess last year's Virtual Rhapsody was the same way. So why change it? We have, you know, all of them there, which is fine. Nothing's wrong with that. It says, as Reddit said, wow, such empty. The person here also did something right here. The girl next to me reading Yaoi during Sunny's song. Oh my goodness. Apparently someone next to her is reading Yaoi. Yaoi. Imagine over a hundred dollars for this and actual hundred bucks and you're reading Yaoi as someone else is singing. You're kind of just having it as like a background music to what you're doing. That is kind of, it's kind of crazy. And here are the sources that they put. Sadistic Pie, Ray Eclipse, Koremu, um, some more rows that are empty. I'm glad that someone is putting uh, the actual things. So these are people right here. Like I said, they could be cherry picking everything, but the sources are actually here of people actually putting the things through here. The I'm not going to actually put any sound because it could be copywritten and it could be risky. So I'm not going to put any sound here. You know, basically the um, the shutter looking thing is because of, oh, dear, dear Lordy, because of the uh, the actual shutter speed of the camera that is taking it more than likely. And we have here, which is another one, just more people laughing at it, more people laughing at what's going on. And this one is has been removed, apparently. I don't know why it's been removed, but it's been removed. So that is the beginning of that portion of the person reading that more empty seats here's someone who is enjoying themselves who actually is uh a fan which is fun which is good i'm very happy that they are able to enjoy themselves in virtual rhapsody the people that are going are fans i'm not gonna knock the fans i'm not gonna knock them at all because as i've always said an oshi is a very very personal thing it is a personal connection to a vtuber it is a close connection to a vtuber so anyone that has an oshi for any reason I'm perfectly fine with, perfectly okay with someone having an Oshi for whatever reason, wherever they want it to be. So I'm not knocking these people for actually purchasing these, purchasing these tickets. They did it. It's their own money. They earned their own money to let them do it. It just, what I don't like is that it looks like Nidhi Sanji went and did the lazy thing. They went lazy with this. And that is the problem that I have with it. Not so much that they went and did this, not so much that these people paid the money, but the Nidhi Sanji went the lazy way. They didn't try to make an actual concert out of this. They made it basically a live 2D karaoke and kind of meet and greet or whatever moment. So yeah, I think a lot of these empty seats in front are probably the premium seats that cost, you know, 140, 150 bucks or whatever it ended up being. That is what makes more sense to me. Just being logical, being objective, not being a witch hunter and not being someone who just hates for the sake of hating. These in front are more than likely just premium seats, which means that, of course, you have people who did not want to pay that, did not see the value in paying for uh, these humongous seats over here and, you know, humongous prices. That absolutely looks bad. That looks very bad. And what this person is saying is that that drop really makes it seem like the talents are moving the models with their mouse. Very expensive karaoke stream in the end. Yes. It says, man, I almost feel bad. The cheapest in every regard. And I'm really sure their tickets were, were the most expensive. You can literally see the cursor flying around near Enna's neck and chest area. They even try to make a nonchalant by having a cursor dance as if it was a planned part. I don't even know with this company anymore. That's the problem that I have with it. And I think that's the problem with what a lot of people have with it. Look closely around the collar area. You can see the actual cursor. Last minute school report after group spent most of their week 
effing around level. It is, uh, I'm pretty sure, probably being unfair to some school reports. But yeah, last post, sorry for the spam. Intern Kuhn forgot his unplug his mouse. Or there are options in some programs to remove the cursor when you're actually going through it. In fact, OBS has that option, which I have active, which is why you can't see my cursor go through all these different spaces and go up and down because I have it removed because it can remove from the actual experience. And that's what I try to do. I try to make sure it doesn't remove from the actual experience. Here's other parts of Virtual Rhapsody. The meet and greets look like it was just connected to a laptop and a, ma a well, I mean, it looks like something that an indie would do. I mean, this is fine for meet and greet, but you expect a little bit more technology. You expect a little bit more finesse if anything, I mean, if anything, probably finesse is what you expect from the organization. I don't blame Anna for this. I don't blame the livers for this. I don't blame uh, anyone but the actual uh, any color, actual, you know, Nidhi Sanji doing this. You want better quality? You could have just, just effing ass Claude. Makes you wonder what kind of excuses the Nidhi sisters are going to puke this time. Bro, please, billion dollar company, how poor is Ian Branch? It's seriously, it's, it looks really bad. <clears throat> this is basically their... Uh, they're basically saying it is like a poor man's. They're saying it's a poor man's thing versus, you know, the actual uh, clip, the actual gif of what's going on. That 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 is that is a st distinct one. That compared to this, which is, you know, the actual 3D look of it and actual looking like it's a concert type of situation. That's the difference. The other one felt like a karaoke while this one feels like a concert. I'm just going to read the top one so we can get through most of this stuff. Hollow can offer this level of production at a concert and charge reasonable fees. I think the tickets for $50 AUS than Soka Nidhi Sanji. Even if they use, we're not an idol company. BS, that's no excuse for overcharging fans for glorified karaoke streams. I agree. And here we go. Here's this one where there was screen tearing. This is what happens when like you don't have VSync on. You have screen tearing. The um from what I understand, screen tearing, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, of course, is when uh your screen, your 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 actual monitor can't catch up with what uh you're putting out, with what's being put out, and there's kind of just like little tears in uh the animation and such like that. So VSync, for whatever reason, wasn't turned on. I don't know if you can turn on VSync with Life 2D. I don't know if you can turn on VSync with what they're doing there. But if they could have, they should have. Or they should have at least tried to find a way to not have it screen tear. I don't think this is the actual, um, because everything else seems fine. I don't think this is the actual uh, like camera having an issue. I think this is, it could be, could very well be. It could be just we're seeing it through a camera and maybe it wasn't like that real in real life. Pre-recorded just how? Just how did you, little do you have to carry? If even if it's pre-recorded, let's say it's pre-recorded. Let's just say it's pre-recorded. That's when you could actually go and post and be like, "Oh, this is screen tearing. Let's fix that," or let's re-record that PowerPoint presentation. How could it get this bad? Don't they have three D already? Why are they not using it? You know that type of thing. People aren't liking it. Let's continue on. Virtual Rhapsody. Let's fight somewhere empty. And then they went to. This is a bit of a meme. A bit of a meme for it. But let's move on. Another clip from Rhapsody. Um, right here we go. And uh, yeah, they're just basically going back and forth. It's basically a karaoke, pretty much. Like I said, I'm not doing audio for this, because of the fact that you know it could be claimed, etc. Let's looks empty without Pomu. Uh, you're right, but at least you went better place now. It says right here, another another one. Like I said, I'm not going to read all of them. Uh, so I already found out not worth getting tickets to see Hololive's concert, uh, which is just a high production 3D stream. This is literally paying 70 bucks to just sit in a room with 30 some odd people to watch archive tier karaoke. Exactly. This is archive tier tier karaoke. Here's the issue. The talents, Finana and Illyra. As much as you don't like Illyra, she's trying her hardest. She's actually trying. They're trying to entertain, but they're being sold short by the company themselves. You can have all your qualms you want about Illyra. I already do as well. You can have all your qualms you want about Finana. People already do. But the sheer fact is they are trying. They are at least there trying to entertain. But the problem is they are being having the their feet swept from underneath them by the company who is actually not doing anything fun for them. It's not actually promoting them correctly. It's not actually producing them correctly. That's the way it feels at least. And here we have a comparison. It's blurry and everything, but there's Virtual Rap Seat at the top, you know, with, of course, the premium seats being empty is what I'm guessing. And over here, you have premium seats, which are at the bottom, which is, you know, the, the pit tends to be a bit of a premium area. And there you have it. The, uh, the DreamHack um, concert from Hololive. Don't worry, quarter four results will be our biggest profit. That's what they're saying here. It says it's like Jack's birthday, ba Jack's backstory in Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Are they trying to compare us with Hollow? Don't worry, the difference is negligible. Need you probably. So much empty. Here's another little bit of uh, meme. Let's just start with a little bit of meme here. We go in with a little bit of meme. It's Kurt Sanji's Virtual Rhapsody has so much empty. You have it right here. Uh, yeah, it's very empty. 
even in the back. Oh, this is looking towards the back. Even looking towards the back. This is towards the front. And this is towards the back. Oh, uh, no, this is towards the sides. So, yeah. Oh, and the back, too. They also have the back, too. So, it's a lot of empty, unfortunately, for them. And then, of course, we have the other one that we did over here, um, you know, right here, which is Let's Fight Somewhere Empty. And they went to the DreamHack, uh, the, to the Nidhi Sandy thing. And that's, you know, the, the, the little memes I wanted to show you guys here. And let's go and see what they say. I mean, let us be real. We're really shocked about this. The end branch is falling. Uh, since the fallout, their biggest names shot themselves and the rest of those not involved in the foot. We already knew how Esther management is and how non-existent they would be. We saw how vast majority of meet and greets hadn't sold out. We had the black stream, which failed in epic proportions. And most recently, in possibly every instance, Anna acting like criticism and energy is unjustified. If you act tone deaf towards the issues, you reap what you sow. And yeah, meanwhile, in DreamHack, this is someone else putting something in DreamHack. It's just comparisons, which is what you're going to have all the time. Again, the comparisons are this one's pretty full. Of course, they don't allow sales of seats at the very top because of the projector style technology that they're going to be using. And that will prevent things from actually being seen from the very top. You have certain angles that are viewable in this. And that's why they have these things. More meet and greets. Over here, they decided to using the cheapest Logitech webcam for its meet and greet. They're just using the like the the regular, uh, easily affordable webcams when they could possibly be using like a higher end actual camera, maybe a DSLR or something like that. But no, they're using this because you know, of course, they're probably using the same thing for the Life 2D. Maybe they're using actual phones, you know, that type of thing. But um, this since it's it's for a meet and greet. Oof, the twenty twenty three dollars uh, C two. 270, which is a 720 webcam. They're trying to probably even use ones from last year or anything like that from Virtual Rhapsody because, you know, we already know that they are all about uh, cheap things. They're all about making sure that things are uh, more affordable for them, I guess. When I went to Hollow Meet last month at Anime Boston, I went up to the mic and spoke to Narissa, Bibu, and Shiori. It was a good distance away to me, but the screen that they were on, but they all noticed the most hard to see details of my cosplay. I was really surprised and happy they could notice all of it. Their setup was go to day F. I feel bad for all the people at Niji meet and greet when your Oshi can probably count how, how many pixels you are. Yeah, the, the camera they use should at least be 1080p, maybe a 4K type camera, maybe at least a camera, you know, an actual DSLR, something that is high quality to so that they can, you know, maybe, uh, like I said, say personal things like, oh, I love your outfit. I love the frills. I love this. I love that. You know, that type of thing. But no, it's is Niji Sanji we're talking about. This isn't going to happen. And again, people doing more comparisons to DreamHack. And these are sneak peeks of what's going on in dream in dream hack um just the little things here like i said they're doing on screen stuff i'm not going to put too many things because of course hollow life doesn't let you do that but the, the the stuff they have there look the screens the stuff they have going on it's actual like looks like they're on stage you know it looks like they're actually on stage that type of stuff is the production quality you expect from uh hollow life and niji sanji this is one thing that i expected from niji sanji but they didn't do that among other things the 3d hologram screen effect with actual depth audio quality not to mention the size of the crowd and the engagement from them. Hollow Life keeps winning because they're putting effort. And Nidhi Sanji, unfortunately, is selling their people short by not putting in the effort. That's the biggest issue. They're selling their people short by not putting in the effort. Self-admitted Hollow Life fan, well, they're my bias, but I'm struck with the sheer contrast between DreamHack, Down Under, and Virtual Rhapsody. From the crowd, the energy of the venue. In all seriousness, Down Under was basically tacked onto DreamHack. You wouldn't expect you would expect disinterested gamers who were just curious about these anime women on the screen and small smattering of pen light wielding hollow fans awkwardly waving them around. But no, this is a legit hollow concert. Then you have the stuff over at Virtual Rhapsody. Down Under is Melbourne for crying out loud. Like holy effing moly, I'll say it before, I'll say it again. Need you could never. And I mean, they they could if they tried. They could if they tried. If they actually put in effort, then they may have been able to do something like hollow life. Like I'm saying. Just giving them real just benefit of the doubt, real just, you know, being honest and objective. Um, they effed up. They effed up really bad. They messed up really bad. They sold their people short. You have people here who really seem to enjoy what they were doing at Melbourne. You could get people like that at uh at Virtual Rhapsody, but Needy doesn't care. Needy cares about selling tickets, not about making something amazing. At least that's what it seems like. And they sell their they sell their talent short by doing this. The loss of Selene will be negligible. Of course. Here we go. It's not negligible. And that's all I have to say about the DreamHack versus Virtual Rhapsody and all of the Virtual Rhapsody coverage. That's all I have to say about this one. Uh, it just, they messed up. They messed up real bad. And Hollow Life showed them basically a master class of how you're supposed to do things, but Nidhi Sanji won't learn. And it sucks for the talents because a lot of the talents, whether you like them or not, are actually trying hard because I'm just taking it from a VTuber's perspective. Even if you work for an S company, a bad tier company, a black tier company, a red flag company, whatever you want to call it, you're still doing your best in efforts to entertain.
more memes going around when it comes to Nidhi Sanji overall. I love looking at the memes, so let's take a look a little bit at these memes. It says, don't worry, Commander, I assure you the next wave will be successful. We distract them with more NDF bots. Uh, and then, yeah, as you can see, our situation is shockingly neg negligible. Negligible. I almost said negligible, Mom. But yes, down here, say, wait, wasn't this supposed to be Comrade? Sorry, CNC player here. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Also, considering that Niji's trying hard for that CN market. To be honest, they'll actually put more effort in the CN market. Who knows? They probably won't. Riku's escaping the once, the one place uncorrupted by sinking yachts. Spess! And here's another one. And another one. They take your PC, house, car, pet, spouse, and bank accounts. I sleep. They steal your effing monkey! I had freaking, freaking parrot voice. Parrot voice is the freaking one that I always... I always uh, hear when I see this, this, this dear effing monkey, because I think he said it in one of his, uh, one of his videos, Parrot Chan, uh, real S, not my effing monkey. Uh, could you explain your meme, young man? Black Co contract stated they, they take everything related to work once you're out. Yes, they did. Certain green parrots voice live lives rent free in my head while reading it. Dang it. Company property. You signed the contract, but yeah, it's Parrot Chan. It's, the, they're not going to steal the monkey, not the monkey. They're not going to steal the monkey. They can't steal my monkey. This is Pekora's monkey. This is the beautiful Jill. This is Jill. Do not freaking try to steal Jill. Do not steal Jill. Do not do that. And here's the last little one that I'm going to put you out for you there for when it comes to memes. It's some CEOs buy yachts to support their ego. Others buy convention booths to support artists. Which CEO do you support? Of course, I'm going to support the one that supports artists. I'm going to support the one that supports other people. And I will still say that if you support Nidhi Sanji's um, actual livers, that's fine. You do you. I'm not going to do that, but you do you. Because I don't want to be like too harsh on the livers. I'm harsh as heck on the actual company. I dislike the company a lot because they have messed up really bad. But the talents themselves, they're trying their hardest. But Sakana, he's done amazing things. He, what they're just talking about is that he went to Afkai. Not only did he sponsor the artist Ali for Afkai, he actually went and paid for every single fee that the artists were having in Artist Alley slash merch booth area. He paid for all the fees, which is at least like tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. He decided to pay for it because what does that do? Gives amazing PR. He is the buff fish. He is the buff fish. And the art was made by Lou Wood, which I will show later on. This man, because... Uh, seeing his talents torture and eviscerate him, he needs money for long therapy sessions. Uh, the ones who doesn't melt play buttons to make the yacht. And this is Luwood. This is the person who actually made it. It looks horrifying. Yes. Even Pippin Pipka said, uh, Pipkin Pippa said uh, that it is horrifying, uh, worth the trip. And everybody's basically going over it. And it's fun. It's fun to see these things. It's absolutely fun to see these things. So I wanted to leave you with a little bit of levity a little bit of this this is poking fun at Nidhi Sanji as well but this is more of a commentary situation uh Nidhi Sanji and Hololive are not so different Hololive don't have managers they don't have talents and they're talking about Nodoka and uh Achan which are both managers but they have their own VTuber personas and it actually helps them out because when they're actually doing like big productions or they're doing you know skits or they're doing a a show and tell or any kind of like game show type of thing they can actually have them on the screen if that instead of them being some uh random voice heard in the wind they can actually have them there which is nice which is very nice quite sad that hollow sub lost all its moderation it's chugging along for now but many people have mentioned posts being auto removed due to report spamming a couple of those from fuamoko that's sad to hear if they lost their moderation that's not good that's second hand second hand of course i don't know what's going on maybe something maybe it is a problem with reddit itself uh achan and nodoka could literally start their own channels under hololive in fact thrive hololive really feels like a rabbit hole where the more you dig the more you find enjoyable. It's so different from Niji Sanji, at least what these people say. Famoko said they did not, they did apply both to Holo and Niji and got turned down by both. They kept trying and only Holo gave them a shot. Thank goodness that the yacht man thinks his company is too good for Fuamoko and they literally miss a chance to abuse the twin dogger. This is all, this all here is hearsay, except for the fact that Fuamoko did say that they tried for many companies. So they assumed that Niji Sanji is involved in that. They tried many times. They were, they were, they did say that they were shot down many times. And then finally, Hololive did give them a chance. Now, the abuse thing and the um, the other, you know, mistreatment and things like that are third party. They all are assumed through rats. They all are assumed through opinions. So we can't be 100% sure. But, you know, just want to let you guys know that this was a thing. This one now is a bit worrying as a VTuber myself, as an independent VTuber myself. Hachi Himiwari, someone was mentioning why they deleted their Twitter, as they're showing here, and their YouTube, as they're showing here. Hachi Himiwari is, as you can see, like a bat vampirist type of uh, character. And uh, she 
is popular enough or was popular enough that, you know, she was doing well for herself. But I have no idea what happened to her, but her design looks so cool. I'm sorry I did not find it before she deleted it. She got doxxed, apparently, according to this person. Again, this is third party information. This is secondhand information. So we don't know 100%, but I think she maybe had talked about it in the past. If it's true, it's very bad. She's fine and she deleted her accounts weeks later. I too don't know what caused her to delete the accounts. I hope that there's a chance we can see her again. Three more replies. Uh, this person's saying a rabid crazy fan, jealous auntie, ex-rival, a rival, doesn't matter. Dox is a dox. Anyways, that's awful. Throwing away your career to protect yourself is correct, but awful end to a promising VTuber career. Um, this one was removed by a moderator. Someone says anyone who doxes anyone are disgusting. And it's very true. I wanted to show the things that were down there. Private their old account for personal stuff from now on and use hot. Hamchi VT now, unless it's a major coincidence and someone else has the exact same name. Someone is saying it's Hamchi VT. Some people are saying that it might be the same person. So let's take a look and see if Hamchi VT is actually active on Twitter. Let's take a quick look at this and see if it is the same person or if it is not. But first, let's see. Most people look too deeply into this. The most likely got nervous breakdown or something to that extent, but I don't know who she is. So I'm assuming she hasn't debuted yet. She did debut. It's just that she got doxxed, it seems like, and uh, that was an issue. But we're going to take a look and see if we can find some more information. I don't know unless they are actually um, going to re-debut debut with someone else as a cozy ghost VTuber, and they decided to get rid of the other one. I have a feeling this is a totally different one. It may just be a coincidence. It may just be a coincidence that they're using something similar, but um, it's a V artist, personal account is Hamchiro. If they have their personal account open, then um, yeah, I don't think this is the same one. The poster protected, it might be, it might be the same one because if the poster protected and the other one says protected, there's a lot of coincidences going on, but I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide whether it is or isn't. I'm just putting the information out there. I have my doubts that it actually is the same person because of course, unless, like I said, they are actually going to be showing up in a different form because of the doxing before, the alleged doxing before, uh, I really can't tell you if it's going to be or not the same person. Uh, they're active. It looks like they're active enough and they are actually, you know, retweeting a lot of people's things. So we will see. But some people were saying uh, that it is. I can't really tell you whether it is or isn't because of the fact that it is, you know, something uh, that can just be an e easy coincidence. He might not stop. Very mean to say it in a post of YouTube's radio silence. Yeah, it's just a lot of people are going to have their ideas. A lot of people are going to have their conjectures when it comes to this. I'm just putting out the information, though. This person here says that there will be a collaboration between Doki, Fillion, Face Connects, Pippin, Pipkin, Pippa, and Lumi on Wednesday, May 1st, local time. The game will be a board game. So there's going to be something going on here, which is what it says in Kurosanji. And it's like, we, we have a, a, what a combo, going to be unhinged, of course. Can't wait to know the second collab as well as Doki stating having two collabs next week. But sisters will see about this collab. Brace yourself, people. So I guess there will be Twitter seething again. Hell yeah, it's going to be a blast. A lot of people are liking it. Uh, sauce in this OP. Um, Pippa with uh, Phil and Doki in one stream. Nuclear fallout. It's going to be fun. Uh, two people make Twitter seethe and one makes needy, sand, needy fans seethe by existing. All in the same room. This is going to be a blast. So a lot of people think this is going to be amazing. I think it's going to be amazing too because Doki brings a lot of energy and so does Fillion. Pippa brings her unhingedness to it and that's just going to make it fun for everybody involved. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.